how far away are we from the 52 first miles oh wow it's still going strong it's still pinging regularly with locations and that's fine my good friend Bimol is great at coming up with crazy ideas and I love helping him implement them and he told me about his crazy awesome idea to send cameras up on weather balloons and I was all in. I'm Heather Brundage. I'm an engineer and explorer and I like to go on crazy adventures. I'm Vimal Belodia. I'm a serial entrepreneur, software engineer, and maker of random things. We're the Casa de Balloon Club, and this is Made with Android. Watching weather balloons is kind of an interesting engineering challenge, plus the fact that you can get pictures of the Earth from 80,000 feet, where you actually see the complete blackness of the sky and the curvature of the Earth, and it's absolutely incredible. We used Android because it was a very affordable device. Another reason why we used Android is it had fantastic documentation. One of the greatest things about Android was that it was very easy to pick up. Literally just downloaded the SDK, read through the first tutorial on how to build an app, and then built the first prototype of this all in an afternoon. Instead of using this battery, we're going to be wiring in one of these holders. Up above 30 to 40,000 feet, the normal lithium batteries that are sitting in your phones will not work all the way up there because they'll just freeze. We actually have to hook our phones up to external battery packs that are using disposable lithium primary batteries. I actually do all of this in my living room. I just have a little bench, and you don't really need that much to do a project like this. Our most basic payload is just an Android phone. And with that phone, we're able to get GPS location as well as altitude. Android allowed us to take control of the phone in a low-level way that we needed. We're using these phones in a way that they're not designed for, and other phones don't let you do that. So the app that we develop for our balloon launches is pretty much the polar opposite of a normal well-behaved mobile app. A normal well-behaved mobile app tries to be very careful about power consumption. It tries to play well with all the other apps that are running. It doesn't want to hog resources. We want it to be running all the time. We never want it to sleep. We want it to always be the most important app that is running and make sure that if for whatever reason the phone reboots because of a low power situation or something, our app comes up and running. That's something that a lot of other phones don't allow you to have access to, but Android allowed us to have that control. And there's our phone booting up. Good times. Check the weather for this Saturday and actually it looks fantastic. Ahead of time, I end up doing a lot of work on the computer, and I'm looking at wind simulations to figure out a good launch location, as well as expected drop zones, checking that against no-fly zones and airports in big cities to make sure that we don't have any issues. And, oh, it'll pop over Los Banos and land a little, bit a little fry bro. That's not a bad area. Nice. Sweet. So it looks like Saturday's going to be good. We do run extra predictions right at the time of launch, since wind predictions are only so good and they can change. I'm going to be preparing the payloads, putting in the batteries, turning on the phones, just doing a final check to make sure all the software's running. It looks like it's working. We've also added in an Android camera. So it's not a phone, it's specifically a camera, so it's much better than the camera in just a regular Android phone. There are a lot of different things to worry about in these payloads. We have a bunch of trade-offs with respect to weight, power consumption, the electronics and their sophistication. You guys ready? At the day of the launch, we have a minimum of three people. We have the helium person, the balloon person, and the lift person. And then ideally, we also have a fourth person with us who's reading off the directions. Slide balloon neck approximately three inches over the PVC balloon fill nozzle. This is by far the hardest part. All right, helium fill, ready? Go. He's perfect. Great! Yay. All right. Then we tie the payloads to them, let them go, cross our fingers. Three, two, two one. one. Woo! Oh. <laughs> go, little balloon, go. You can do it. Wow, that's really awesome to see. Oh, man, look at that. It just. <gasps> Woo! Yes! <laughs> 
Once the balloon is in the air, we're actively tracking it. We have two devices in there. They're both sending us GPS location. So they're close, they're a little off from each other, but you can see she's drifting southeast ever so slightly, which is exactly what we expected. We do lose contact with the balloon at about 20,000 feet when it leaves cell reception. The cell phone is still getting GPS data up to about 60,000 feet when it then loses GPS data. When the balloon rises, it expands, and when it gets high enough, it bursts. And that's when the parachute deploys and it starts to descend back to Earth. At this point, it's falling at about five meters per second with a parachute, and it's spinning around. So it takes it a while to get a cell reception and a GPS lock once it gets below there. It could land on a freeway, which we hope not, it could land in a farm field, or it could land in the water. We don't know. <laughs> the worst possible thing that could go wrong is that the payload actually lands on a road or inside a crowded area, and we take a lot of precautions in choosing both our launch site as well as our expected landing site to make sure that that's not going to happen. We could just lose the balloon completely, have no contact with it. The batteries could die, the phone could stop working, the program could crash and not reboot, and if we don't hear from it, we're not gonna get it back. About half the launches that people have done and blogged about, they never saw again. Hey, to a great launch. Hey. Cheers. 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 Woo. Woo. To a full recovery. To a full recovery. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, whoa. She went pretty far south. So it's in a field. We don't have to worry. Yeah, right in a farm field. Perfect. Let's go pick it up. This is a perfect day for Central Valley wind. It was exactly as we usually expect, a nice southeast wind. Yeah, so I'm about as zoomed in as I can possibly be. And here, wait, let me show you the map. So one of the great things about using an Android phone is actually, in addition to using GPS, also using network triangulation. So we have a much more accurate location Let's spot just... on it down to a couple of feet. I'm just hoping there aren't like snakes. Or sprinklers. <laughs> yeah, or sprinklers. <laughs> Typically, we can see the red parachute sticking up. This time we couldn't, so we had this big green field and no red dot. <laughs> so we had to start tromping through the field, but finally we got right on top of it and there it was. Found it! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yes! Awesome! The Android device knew where it was well enough and was able to communicate its location to us well enough that it led us right to it. It was a homing beacon effectively, just purely through GPS data. And even if all we knew was, hey, it's in this field, it would have taken us forever. A combine would have found it before we did. We would have had to fly over the field to see that. <laughs> there we go. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, everything is still pretty safe and solid and secure. Dang. Oh, man, Whoa. look at this. It just tied itself it pretty in much... a Wow. So here is our happy, reliable phone. It's been ticking along. Still on? Nice. It is still on. It has a great connection, too. Awesome. Let's... <laughs> Everything looks to be intact. When we recover the payloads, we bring computers with us and we like to look at the pictures. Which is really satisfying at the end of a long day to see these pictures that you've just retrieved. If other people are interested in doing ballooning, our code is open source and available online. Everyone who does this has their own site and has their own blog and tells their own story about their launches and their payload and their experience. And we've read a ton of them and learned a lot from that. And we also want to share our story at casadeballoon.club. We're Casa de Balloon Club. And this was made with Android. <laughs> the problem with regular lithium batteries is when it gets really, really, really cold, they stop working. So that's why we had to switch to lithium primary batteries. All right. <laughs> no, no, no. Take it away from me. Oh, my God. We're done. <laughs>